I'm Jim Gran. I'm a professor of history here at Portland State University. I teach Middle Eastern history. And in my current position, I'm also director of the Middle East Studies Center. And that makes me the, the main advocate and representative of the interdisciplinary program in Middle East Studies here on campus. One of our functions is to provide programming for the campus and the community. We have uh, all sorts of people coming through academic experts who work on the Middle East to activists and cultural figures who are from the Middle East. And uh, they come and they talk about their work and uh, the, the main uh, objective here is to add depth and perspective to what students uh, may be learning in their classes or hearing through the news. We happen to have one of the oldest Middle East study centers in the entire country and it dates back to 1959. We were one of the first to get federal support. We have uh, five Middle Eastern languages being taught on campus. Uh, that's very unusual. It's, it's a tremendous uh, resource for us. And uh, I think we're one of the few universities in the entire country to offer an Arabic major. We have a responsibility to, to teach and to reach out to all kinds of constituencies. And I think in a, a, a globalizing world in which uh, students are, are more aware than ever of our connections to other parts of the world, it's no surprise to find that the curriculum is moving in the same direction as well. We have a responsibility to reach out to K-12 educators. We have uh, web resources that they can use, lesson plans, we do seminars, we have webinars, and we have a roster of cultural events, film series, art exhibitions, music concerts and we have uh, about once a month a, a lunch and learn series. We have an evening lecture series. Dean Pintak's talk this evening is entitled Media Wars, Journalists, Generals, and Jihadis. History is foundational knowledge. History is always with us whether we acknowledge it or not and so it really uh, behooves anyone who wants to understand a, a region like the Middle East or any, any part of the world to study history. Those of us who have been paying attention um, have known that uh, the Arab world was full of uh, discontents. There were authoritarian regimes that had uh, been in power so long that they assumed an aura of permanence. Now, uh, I think that we all knew that uh, the status quo couldn't last. It was untenable. And there were too many problems. The real question was, when would things come to the boiling point? The recent events uh, across uh, large parts of the Arab world took a lot of us by surprise, not because we couldn't imagine them happening, but because we didn't know when we'd finally see people on the streets and demanding political change. Now. I think if you study history, you can certainly appreciate, first of all, how these regimes came to power, and secondly, why they were able to hang on for so long before they were effectively challenged. And I think what someone like Lawrence Pintak is very uh, effectively able to do is to show why conditions were particularly ripe in uh, the past couple of years for a mass movement to emerge and to take advantage of some of the new communication technologies. His talk was very sophisticated. He doesn't say that uh, those new technologies caused the revolutions. He, he presented a very acute analysis about how they could make a difference and how they could help the region reach a, a tipping point that had been previously unavailable to it. I'd say for the Middle East, and more so than for other regions perhaps, history is important in another way. It helps students uh, once they have greater knowledge to cut through a lot of the myths about the, uh, the Middle East. And there are lots of stereotypes and um, uh, cliches about the Middle East that, that need to be exploded. And, um, uh, and I think history gives some of the best lessons in why those stereotypes and cliches aren't to be trusted, actually.